Let's switch gears a little bit here and talk about what happens if oxygen is available for the cell. In that case, after glycolysis takes place, so remember glucose gets split into two molecules of pyruvic acid, uh, what happens next if oxygen is available is that our NADH molecules, they're going to get freed up uh, by donating their electrons to the electron transport chain. So lots of NAD molecules will be available. And the very first step here, going into aerobic respiration, the very first step is that this pyruvic acid molecule, which has three carbons, it's going to be what we say, uh, we say that it's groomed. It gets groomed, which just means that one of its carbons gets removed. So there's a carbon that's going to be taken off of this molecule and consequently we will end up with something that has only two carbons. That's what these little subscripts are representing. We went from having three carbons in the molecule to two carbons in the molecule. Where did the other one go? If you'll notice right here, it actually leaves in the form of CO2, right, which you ultimately breathe out um, during respiration. So NAD is the molecule that allows that grooming step to happen. NAD is what picks up the electron from the bond and also hydrogen. Um, and there we have it. We go from pyruvic acid to having a molecule of acetic acid, which combines with a carrier molecule, coenzyme A, to give us acetyl-CoA. So one more time just to recap all of that, pyruvic acid comes into a mitochondria, uh, carbon is removed from it, that leaves us with a molecule that just has two carbons, that's actually called acetic acid. Acetic acid joins up with a carrier called coenzyme A, and together they form acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA, this is a molecule to know, acetyl-CoA is what can enter into the next pathway here. The citric acid cycle is the next step that happens during the breakdown of a glucose molecule. And during the citric acid cycle, what we end up producing in the end is three molecules of NADH, one molecule of FADH2, and one molecule of ATP. That's true for every acetyl-CoA that goes into the citric acid cycle. Remember, remember from glycolysis, we actually produced two molecules of pyruvic acid. So there are actually going to be two molecules of acetyl-CoA that will go into this cycle. So our net, um, the net result, the net number of molecules that we produce is actually double this. And we'll see that on the next slide. So in the process of going through the citric acid cycle, what's happening is this molecule that enters in, um, it joins up with something called oxaloacetic acid. And then once those are joined together, we're back to a molecule that has six carbons. But as we go through the pathway, a carbon gets stripped off every here and there. So we go from having six carbons, carbon falls off, then we're down to five carbons, another one falls off, and then we're back down to four. So this is a cycle that can just continue over and over again as we have new acetyl-CoA molecules coming in. So on to the next slide, showing a bit more detail here. Still the same cycle, the citric acid cycle. Okay, here's acetyl-CoA. Again, it's got two carbons. This molecule joins up with oxaloacetic acid. And then as we just kind of follow the overall pathway, uh, by the way, no need to memorize structures or, or names particularly for these intermediates. Um, let's just kind of follow the pathway and watch what happens. Okay, so as we go forward, eventually there's going to be a couple of hydrogens that get picked up right here. So we form an NADH. Keep going. Um, here we have a couple more hydrogens that come off. So we form another NADH. Keep going. Um, right here, we're able to generate an ATP molecule, so energy molecule right there. Keep going. Couple, uh, another hydrogen gets taken up by FADH2, and we're almost there. Um, finally, last step regenerates oxaloacetic acid, and that also allows another electron shuttle molecule to get loaded up. So there we have it. In total, we made one, two, three NADHs, and we made one FADH2, and we made one ATP, and we also made some waste products. I wasn't really pointing them out, but we were all along the way, we were generating some carbon dioxide, so there were two of them that split off right there. 
Okay, so if we're talking about one glucose molecule, again, this pathway is going to happen twice because we make two pyruvic acid molecules during glycolysis. Okay, so go through this pathway twice and count them all up. In total, you should get this many of each type of molecule. That's the citric acid cycle. That's not an easy cycle. Um, this is a fairly complex topic, but again, I'd like for you to know the major inputs into these processes, uh, so into the cycle, um, and then what are the overall outputs in the end. So you should definitely know these products and you should definitely know what is the input into the citric acid cycle.